given the day off from her New York detective agency that she works for part-time. So she's here with us again this morning and she's just going to take this little treat from me <laughs> and then she's going to go back to work. She's on a very important case, something about moles and bacon. There we go. Woof, off we go. Woof. So today, folks, in case you don't follow me on social media. Today is birthday boxing day. <laughs> I'm sure most people who do follow me on social media are, um, that's, just, that's just my watch telling me that my heart rate is high. <sighs> Bring it down. Breathe Gillian, breathe, breathe Gillian. Um, yeah, for those of you that do follow me on social media, you'll know that I do quite like it when it's my birthday. <laughs> and I like to be made Was a Was it your of birthday? Yes. Did you mention that? Yes. Anyway, I had the most fabulous day. I have to say, we did so many lovely things. It was really nice. I thought it was gonna be awful because my kids uh, weren't at home and couldn't visit. Um, but we did, we did lots of lovely things. But I still can't get over the fact that when I went into to Waitrose, which is our local supermarket, um, they didn't know it was my birthday, but a lady approached me and said that she'd been following me on social media. And I reckon about two years ago, I posted a picture of, you know one of those really nice olive oils in a tin that's just got a splendid tin, but it's really super pricey and you can't afford it. I think I must have put that on my Instagram stories. Anyway, yesterday I'm in the supermarket, just browsing, looking at things I should, probably was, you know, like Easter eggs and stuff. Actually, the only reason I'd gone in was to buy makeup remover because I'd run out. Boring. But anyway, got, while I was in there, I thought I'd get some lunchy treats. Was looking at Easter eggs. She comes over, Waitrose uniform, mask, we're all wearing masks, obviously. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, I know that you really like this olive oil and we would like to gift it to you today. And I was like, what? <laughs> sorry? Anyway, I mean, I know they do do that because my daughter used to work for Waitrose and I know they do like these random acts of kindness. Anyway, um, so uh, I got this bottle of olive oil. I said, it's my birthday as well, uh, which she didn't know. So there, there we go. So that's... That's my main sort of, well, not highlight from yesterday, but I still can't quite get over it. It was very odd, uh, and, but very, very lovely. Anyway, I had a lovely day. It's all, it's all on social media if you want to watch it. It's on my Instagram stories. Now, we're here, however, despite all of that, um, to make the Speedy Beady jewellery kit. I, my new kit, I spent ages putting this kit together. I've got a packet here. It comes in the packet. But actually, you don't really need to see the packet. You need to see the contents, and that's what I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, I spent ages putting this together because um, it all started last summer during lockdown. I was in the garden and obviously we do sell the um, Toho seed beads and uh, beading elastic and, and po little mini pom-poms and so on. And I made a few bits and bobs and then I did do a live tutorial last, last year from my conservatory in about May or something. And, um, and everyone loved it and I was like, oh, I must do a kit, I must do a kit. Anyway, it's taken me this long but I really wanted to make it like a good one with some really nice bits in it. So I have spent ages putting together the right colours, the right textures 
and then obviously these letter beads which are hugely popular at the moment and the little heart beads which are very popular at the moment and then but I also wanted to have you know some little extra dimensions some nice charms so there's some lovely little charms uh, included as well and then the other thing that's gone massively bonkers at the moment is this the daisy beading daisies okay so lots of daisy necklaces around lots of daisy bla bracelets around and so on so I'm going to show you how to do that as well this is a little bracelet I've been wearing this for a few weeks now uh, and it stood the test of time because anyone that knows me knows that I do, don't really take jewellery off. I just wear it. I wear it in the shower. I wear it in the bath. I just wear it. I have no time for taking it on and off. Um, so if, you, if anyone ever wants to steal my jewellery, they'd have to actually steal it from me personally because it's always on me. Uh, so, so anyway, so that stood the test of time. So in the kit, there is loads, okay, loads. You can make lots and lots of different things, but at the very least, you can make a necklace, an anklet, a bracelet. So I've got that in a certain place on the table, put it back in the same place. And then several of these really cute little daisy rings. And then you will have more left over to make more, okay. So there's quite a lot in it. There's so much in it. Uh, so what was that from? I never knew there was so much in it. That was an advert for something, wasn't it? No Back idea. In the day. No, no idea, idea whatsoever. He doesn't, know. He doesn't know what I'm talking about. No Nothing idea. Nothing new there. Okay. Have we put the money in the meter this week, Christopher? Is everyone able to see us? I certainly hope so. And if anybody would like to come back in their messaging capacity and say it's all working tickety boo, then I'd really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, yeah, that would be good. Am I lip synced? Can you hear me? Where are you all watching from? Oh, has everyone remembered that the hour went back? Yeah, we've only had about six hours. Oh, no, forward, sorry, spring forward. The hour went forward. <laughs> God. Don't rely forward, on me to- Spring fall back, spring just to forward, use the American Is that what vernacular. the Americans say? Okay. I'm not quite sure where this happens around the world, but it happens in the UK. Uh, and we go on to British summertime. So we are now on British summertime, which is my, this is my absolute favourite time of year, partly because it's my birthday, but now we're on the up, the days get longer, love that. So uh, yeah, so we only had about six hours sleep last night, which wasn't ideal, but you know, it's fine. Bit, bit weary this morning. Anyway, I hope you're all up. And I hope there hasn't been too much confusion if you're all somewhere else. Like, would you know that our clocks have gone back? I'm guessing that's a good point yeah like if you're Never in Canada or or South Africa where I look I know a lot, a lot of people watch this from would you know or are they going to tune in in an hour I did have the countdown timer on Instagram but I, uh, does that know maybe it does anyway yes it must do all right let's move swiftly on shall we um so there's lots of little tiny tiny things to show you here but to start with, I want to start by showing you what is in the kit. It's probably easiest if we just go to, rather looking at me, let's look at what's actually in the kit, which I've got on the table in front of me. Christopher, are you listening? No, Please. I wasn't listening. What <laughs> do you want to do? Wasn't listening. What do you want to do? Oh, also, Chris what? baked his first ever cake yesterday. First ever cake. How old are you, Christopher? No, don't tell us. Anyway, it was very good. It was a very good cake. I requested um, double ginger and apple and it came out brilliantly. And then first time baker, Christopher, what did you say? You had a bit of a light bulb moment, didn't you? Uh, cake is mainly made of sugar and butter. This is true. And sometimes a bit of flour as well. But mainly But mainly sugar, butter and sugar. Butter. It was a bit of a revelation to him. It's probably quite good that you know what's in cake now when you eat it. If you ever eat it. Anyway, uh, let's get back on to subject here. So if we can cut to the overhead shot, please, darling. The wine. Yes, one. lady. <laughs> please. Lovely. Okay, so I'm gonna just talk you through what actually comes in the kit. Right, first of all. I've got my list here actually, so don't forget. So you do get three whole packets of the Toho seed beads, okay? So you get the yellow, the green and the, and the turquoise. And the reason for that is that I have thought long and hard about 
the overall color of, of the finished pieces. So these three colors are then complemented by more sort of pinky, reddy, orangey colors. So you get three packets of those, three tubes of those. Then you get a whole pack of these um, heart, multicolored heart beads. You get a whole pack of these, sorry, Instagrammers, you probably can't see, can you? A whole pack of these and a whole pack of these. Okay, so there's l you get lots and lots of letters to make whichever words you want to make. You don't have to use the words I've made, obviously. Uh, then you are going to you get a whole roll of beading elastic, and this is five meters long. So there's loads of beading elastic there. You get a whole packet of jump rings, which are these here. I don't know if I've actually got, oh yes, I have got a packet, here we go. Get a whole packet of these jump rings here. Now these really are only used to hang the charms. You don't really need that many of these, but here, for example, where I've hung a charm off the anklet, that's where we're gonna be using a jump ring, if you can see that, okay. You also get a whole packet of these brilliant, brilliant beadalon beading needles. Now these are collapsible eye needles. These are really great. So the way these work is <clears throat> they just collapse down really fine like this. And they're also bendy. So they're really good. I found them to be really good. Anyway, so it includes a whole packet of those as well. And then there's all manner of different things that are included here. So you get 10 of these, 10 of these, two pom-poms, two pom-poms. You get a polka dotted uh, carry shell uh, to make the anklet with. You get one each of these gorgeous charms. There's a watermelon, pineapple, there's cherry and a flower. Get two each of the neon tassels. Uh, I've mentioned those already. And then you get 50 of these, I can never remember what they're called. What are they called? Beads. Katsuki disc beads. Oh. Okay, I know there's a special name for those. Uh, pack of those, pack of those. And then you get a smaller amount of these little black and white striped beads and then a smaller amount of these little pink beads just to use as accents here and there. So really quite a lot in there uh, and a lot for you to get going with. And you can see how I've used a combination let me just swing that round of all these different things. Now, obviously, you can do your own thing here and you can um, string them and add them and bead them as you wish. There's just a few sort of key things that I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how to do the daisy. That's one of the things. OK, I'm going to show you how to start the anklet with the carry shell because that works slightly differently. OK, and I'm just going to talk to you generally about getting words the right way round and hanging charms off and so on and that kind of thing as well. So let's start with uh, talking about this beading elastic. Now in the past I found this beading elastic um, has sometimes stretched a bit but they seem to have changed it and it's now a lot less stretchy and the case in point here is this I've been wearing this for quite a number of weeks now and it hasn't stretched at all actually and it's remained completely um as i made it okay and obviously oops and when i put it on my wrist obviously those daisies sit nicely okay so i'm going to talk you through making one of these daisies but first of all i just want to talk to you about how i use the beading elastic all right so whenever i make anything i always start with a piece of elastic that's much longer than you need the finished thing to end up so if i'm making just a ring I would start with a piece that's about 20 centimetres long. If I'm making the, the necklace, I'd start with something that's nearly a metre long. It's probably about 75 centimetres, 80 centimetres long. Just because you need loads of, you need loads of elastic at the end where there's no beads so that they, they don't all slide off. Um, and it just makes the whole process a lot, lot easier. Now you've got five metres on here, so you should have plenty to do that. Um, I've got a piece threaded up here, slightly over 20 centimetres maybe. But I just want to show you, first of all, the most important thing when you start off doing any of this, and that's adding a stopper bead. I think when I showed you this last May, I was using like um, a clothes peg or something to hold the end to stop the beads coming off. You can knot it, okay, let me just show you. You can tie a knot, but when you, you pull it really tight, it just sort of goes very flat and it doesn't really stop the beads from falling off, so it's kind of pointless. 
So really, we're going to use um, what we what we really need to use is an actual bead to stop the other beads from falling off. So let's just go through that process first. If you can go to the overhead again, please, my love. Thank you. All right. So I've got a little striped bead here, and this is what I'm going to use as my stopper bead. And I'm and I've threaded up my um, my bead beading elastic through my my beady needle, my bead alone collapsible needle. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to thread through this one bead, which is going to be my stopper bead. You don't take it right to the end, just sit it up here for a minute, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just bead round it again. I'm going to go through the middle of it again, all right? Now we have got a close-up camera. Let me just get it through the middle first, all right? Then if we can go to the close-up camera, let's see what happens. Oh my Come gracious. On. I've just got to try and focus it. Okay. It's very close. There we are. Okay, so I've gone through that again, all right? And then I'm just going to pull that tight. I'll try and keep oh, I don't know it's really difficult to do it without moving. I'll try and keep it as There we go. All right, we're there. So that, my friends, is a stopper bead, okay? Now, if I just give that a little twiddle round, you can see there's the elastic, okay, sitting around the side of it. Now, I can slide that now up and down my beading elastic. So I'm just going to slide it down a little bit to about there. Now, if you find that it's sliding off or it's sliding too much, what you can do is you can go through that process again. So I can stick the needle back through, okay, like this. And pull it through again. Is this going to work? I actually can't see what I've done. I'm, I'm trying to keep it in one place and it's not the easiest thing. No, I don't think I have done that. Um, anyway. Oh yeah, no, maybe I have. Maybe I have. Yes, I have. Oh, ye of little faith, Gillian. All right. Are we still there? Are we still in focus? Which way am I going? Up or down? There we go. There we go. All right. So you can see I've actually done that twice now. So there's my stopper bead. And actually, that's going to really stop it from moving around. And it's going to stop anything else from falling off. All right. I've got this little pin here because that shows me exactly where the center of the camera shot is, if you're wondering what that's sitting there for. OK. And then you'll also notice that I'm working onto some, uh, it's actually the back of one of our new project bags. It's just a piece of, of cotton which I do recommend. I recommend working on something that's light coloured. Um, a tray is good. A plate is good, but a plate can be quite shiny. So um, something that's going to stop your beads from sort of really moving around too much and falling off and rolling onto the floor. So a fabric is ideal. OK. All right. So there's my stopper bead. Right now, if you go to the next shot out, please, Christopher. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, I was finding goodness that very everyone, stressful. Everyone was holding <laughs> their breath. All right, so I'm going to show you now how to do uh, the little flower bead, all right? Like this one here. Let me just stick it on my finger so we can reference it, okay? So, so what this has got is it's got a number of single colored beads around the edge. Then I've done the equivalent of what I've called a leaf, okay? So if we're thinking of this as being a daisy, it's got a center, it's got some petals. I think you've got to show people that on the close. All right, you know, go on Julian, then. Okay. I, all right. I, I, hate, I hate to say it. Okay, well, if we're going close, let so me put the other one go. on as well. Let me put a couple on. Hang on. Let me put that one on that finger as well. All right. Okay. I'm ready. Okay. All right. Here we go. So if we're thinking about this being the center of the daisy, there's my daisy center. Then these are my petals, one, two, three, four, five, six. Then on this one, I've done leaves. That's a green leaf and that's a green leaf. Then obviously I've done the rest of the beads on this one, one color. And then on the other, on this ring here, I've done alternating colors. So it doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna show you how to do this little daisy here. Okay, so here's one I prepared earlier as well. So um, you can see it's just got one in the middle and then it's got, Six round sides. Now you can do this in a number of different ways. You can do a seven petaled daisy. Okay. I've experimented quite a few different techniques and I've decided that this is the best way to do it because I think it looks more even when you've finished and I'll explain why as I show you how to do it. Okay. But essentially this has got six petals and it's got one 
sitting in the center. All right, okay. So let's just come away from that uber close up. So I've got my little, my little stopper bead here, okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thread on some of my beads that I'm just going to have uh, either side of the daisy. All right. So let's just have a yellow one as my sort of leaf petal, if you like. Okay. So now to actually make the daisy, first of all, I'm going to make a green daisy and I'm going to give it a pink center. Let's go with that for now. That's the, there's my pink center and these are my going to be my petal colors. All right. So I'm going to pick up one, two, three, four, petals. So you might think you do three and three, but you actually don't. You start off with four petals, all right? And then I'm going to put in my daisy center. Actually, that is a poxy small bead. Let's use a yellow one for the center, because it's more or less the same color. Come here, little yellow beady. There we go, all right. So I've got four petals and I've got a yellow center, okay? Right, I'm gonna pull those down. So they're sitting like that, okay? Now then this is a bit weird, okay? So this is where you need to pay attention, folks. What you're gonna do then is you're going to take your elastic back through the bottom bead in the wrong direction. So it's almost like you're going back from to in the direction you started in. So you're just gonna thread through this bottom bead, okay? Back in the original direction. All right, so bear with me while I do actually pull that through. You might see a load of fingers and thumbs now while that happens, okay? All right, and then I'm just gonna pull that taut. And then what I want to show you here now is the beginning of our daisy, all right? So we've got three of the petals here, we've got one there, which is a bit random, and then we've got the center here, all right? And now we've gone, and we've gone down here, so our, our, our elastic's actually pointing that way. So now I'm just gonna take another two petals. So to end up with this three and three, we're, we're actually doing four and two. So we're doing two, four, <laughs> then a center, then two. All right, so now I've got two on there, okay? And then I'm going to go back through the, uh, through the, through the fourth original petal, okay? So I'm gonna go back up here through the fourth original petal, and you'll see now that comes, turns into a daisy. That's magic. All right, it is magic, isn't it? So just to, to recap, I did four, and a center, and then I went down, and then I did two, and then I went up, all right? And there's my daisy. Now I'm just gonna just see, I'm just gonna slide that down. Now the beauty of using the beading elastic, as opposed to something more rigid, is it's just gonna allow, allows you to sort of slide things back and forth. Well, I guess if you were using anything, it would. Now, the other thing that I've discovered is quite good now, which I want to share with you as a top tip, top tip alert, is to now go back through these green beads in a three and then a three, because I think they want to sit in a four and a two because that's how you've beaded them. Now, the beauty of this uh, lovely uh, needle is that it bends, so you can kind of bend it, hold it further down and bend it round into the shape that you are beading, which is quite handy because if it was rigid, I think it would be more difficult to do that. So I'm going to go through those, ooh, get out the way. There we go. I'm going to go through those three first. Yeah. <laughs> and I can't believe I'm doing this, it's so fiddly. Okay, up like that. And then just to make it lie flatter, when I finished it, I'm going to go through the other three I have a feeling I've missed one out. Wait, it's so fiddly trying to do that. You see, the, the trouble is I'm not sitting directly over it because I'm, I've got the camera shot to think about. There we go, all right. And then I'm just gonna pull those three like that. Oop, like that, all right. So there is my little daisy. So that is how I've decided is the best way to do them. 
it's a four and a two and then a three and a three. But there are other ways of doing this. And then I'm just going to take another um, little yellow bead. Bear with me a sec. There we go. Oh, more fingers and thumbs now. I'm trying to hold it so you can see it. Right. Uh, I'm just going to take another little yellow bead like that. And there. Uh, just my lift it up a little bit higher. Lift it up a little bit higher. Oh, no, no, no. A little bit lower. Away, <laughs> away from you. I was a bit confused what you meant then. All right, so those are my leaves either side. I mean, I know they're not green leaves, are they? So a uh, little flower centre and then three either side. So now I've shown you how to do that, let me now go back to this one and you can see. So what I've done here is I've done a, um, a daisy and then I've done one, two, three, four, five yellow, a daisy, one, two, three, four, five green, a daisy, one, two, three, five yellow. What I've done here is I've done my little daisy. I've actually left the stopper bead on this one because I quite like it at the back. Also, I think, you know, when it's at the back, um, it's fine, isn't it? You, it's just going to sit on the back of your finger. So I left it there with its, you can see, with its beading elastic around it. But obviously, you could uh, remove that if you wanted to. If you're a perfectionist and you wouldn't like that to be in there. What did I do with this one? I don't even remember. I removed it on this one. There you go. So this one, look, that's got proper leaves and everything. It's got green leaves and then it's got a pink, pretty pink center. It's got the blue petals and then it's got, let me just model that for you, shall I? Ooh, there we go. Um, look, it's, oh, there we go. There we are. Very pretty. Right, so moving on from that, if you wanted to, let's just get that out of the way. You could obviously add them in in the middle of your other beading. So say you're making this lovely bracelet, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second. Um, I've added in a daisy just here, look. And then on the anklet, have I added in a daisy? No, I haven't. But on the necklace I have, look, I've added in a little one there on the necklace. So anyway, that's the daisies. Any questions so far? Or is everyone still in bed asleep? Uh, hold on a moment, please. Uh, just talk amongst yourselves. Oh, why? What, what, do you, what do you mean talk amongst yourselves? Well, there's only you me know what? here. All right. OK, I haven't you mean... read the messages. Okay. Is there any messages? Okay, okay. No, I don't think there is. OK, OK, OK. No problem. All right. So I want to just... Um, carry on let me just carry on next to this daisy and i just want to talk to you about adding the beads and adding the hearts and that kind of thing now pretend this say this is a bracelet all right um let's just move it up here so you can see what i'm doing so say this is a bracelet and you wanted to add the words um say your name is buzz buzz lightyear buzz okay. yeah um obviously you get i've got my letters here ready because my name's buzz can you tell that i was desperately trying to make a word out of letter b that i'd pulled out of the packet buzz it was right so um obviously you're just going to be threading these through like this it's not rocket science um but what i want to point out is especially when you're doing the necklace or if you're doing something that you want to be um symmetrical you need to think about coming at it at both sides. So if you were, uh, if you had some more beading elastic going this way, you've decided that your, your daisy is going to sit centrally and you wanted the word buzz here, but say you wanted the word um, happy here, you're going to need to, to do this in reverse going this way. So you'd do um, Y, P, P, a h going that way and b u z z going this way so you need to think about the direction of your beads you also need to think about which way round you're holding your beads so you don't get the letters upside down um it's a bit difficult getting your head around it but let me explain what i mean with the necklace so when i was doing the necklace no, not the necklace, sorry, the anklet. I think I was going either side from the carry shell. That's right, so I started here. So I was having to think when I, when I beaded these words, 
which direction I was putting the letters on. So do remember that. Now, the other thing to think about are the charms. So obviously you don't want to be wearing your anklet with the back of the charm showing. You want to be wearing it with the front of the charm showing. So when you add your charms, which you can do either as you're going along or at the end, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. If you wanted to add a charm after you've finished, so say I wanted to add a charm, I don't know, here, okay um, the first thing I would do is I'd get one of my little jump rings okay I use a pair of these um, jewelry pliers which we do sell okay I think they're about six or seven pounds something like that um, they're very good because they've got a very fine nose actually I think these are slightly different shape but they've got a flat nose so it's it's much easier to deal with um, these little tiny bits and bobs okay so I'm just going to go to the close-up again actually and I'm just going to show you when Chris tells me it's in focus <laughs> yeah oh, no hold on stand by Stand by, everyone. Whoa, there, right there, there. Yes, yeah. stop, stop. Don't I'll move. Just, I won't move. <laughs> so I want you to see the little um, split in the ring. Okay, it's a jump ring. I'm just going to hold it with one side of my pliers and I'm going to open it up. Can you see that? All right. So what we can do then, once we've got it open up, let's just use the watermelon, okay, is I'm just going to pop the... Oh, I need to open it a bit more. Yep. Am I still in focus? Yeah. Um, I'm just going to pop the watermelon on my jump ring. Okay. And then wherever I want to put it, I'm just going to put it on my anklet, actually. Just trying to hold it really still so it doesn't go out of focus. I'm now going to pop it on the anklet as well. All right. But you need to think about which way round just the charm is going to lie a bit, Jill. just go up, a, up oh, sorry a bit, sorry sorry it. you need to think about which way around the charm is going to lie and dangle all right so i'm just going to show you what i mean so if i put it on this way round okay go up again sorry 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 am i just am i moving down without realizing yes. it and then i'm going to just close up my jump ring okay And then I want to show you that it would lie that way. Sorry, I've laid it down on the table and now it's not in focus. That way. Okay. So it's hanging off. So, of course, if you added this charm without the jump ring, it would sort of sit sideways like that and you wouldn't see the front of the charm when you're wearing it. So if you think about what's happening here, the jump ring is sitting sideways and it's allowing the charm to sit flat on your skin. OK, so obviously that's what you want to happen when you're doing an anklet or when you're doing a bracelet or something like that. Um, and also, obviously, when you're doing the necklace. So you see here I've got the cherries, which I think hang at the bottom of my necklace. Hang on, I've got so much in the way now. It feels really messy. I need to have a little tidy up. Hang on. So, <laughs> why are you laughing? Oh, that's, uh, <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? This is really hard to focus oh, on. Oh, okay. All right. Well, we'll stay on this shot for a minute. Okay. So, you can see that when I, if I've got the, the cherries hanging at the bottom here, I want them to lie flat against my skin when I'm wearing the necklace. And if I'd just put the cherries charm directly onto my beading elastic it would have sat like that and I want it to sit like that okay all right I hope that I hope that's clear um, so with with all of this stuff here what I tend to do is I tend to think about the colors and just breaking up the colors obviously your seed beads are mostly greens and blues and yellows so then I break that up with um, the katsuki beads which are mostly pink with a few other colors thrown in here and there and then some of the kind of pinkier heart-shaped beads loving these little round beads with the hearts on as well and you've got a pink one and you've got one with red and then I do love a bit of black and white thrown in as well so obviously I've just might done my initials on the necklace here I've done happy days and then on the bracelet 
I've done love or if your name is Buzz obviously you could do your name whatever doesn't matter now with the anklet I'm just going to show you something else with the anklet what I did when I started the anklet was I um, I started from a center point of the shell okay the polka dot shell all right and I want to show you this because I bead this differently so what I do, I've got one here I prepared already. What I do is I get, two, and it's all in the instructions of how to do this, but I get two lengths of elastic, okay? And one at a time, I put them through the shell, okay? And I use the shell as a kind of center point. And then I loop the elastic through like that and pull it tight so that you end up with a knot on each side of the cowrie shell, okay? So I pull that tight, and this elastic's great. If you just pull it gently, it will tighten, okay? Don't pull it too much, otherwise you will um, split it, okay? Or it will break. But you know, there's a certain amount of give in there, so that's great. And then I will then tie another knot, actually, just to keep that really tight. Now, you know how I like to talk about uh, a certain glue that I like to use for these things and I have indeed got my trusted gem tack here oh no oh my goodness gem tack for all today. your sticky needs okay, there we go for all your sticky needs I just want to show you how I would then just literally blob the tiniest wee blob okay uh, on there and I would do that on both sides it's probably a little bit too much but just a little blob okay on both sides of that all right and then once that's dry once you've done both sides then you you bead with two pieces of the elastic okay so I would then put both of these pieces of elastic through my beading needle talking about the beading needle just for a second actually it's very easy to thread because it's got such a huge eye but if you are struggling I recommend using the embroidery threader which I did use once when I couldn't see what I was doing but it's it's easy to get even two two pieces through it okay so you're you're beading now with two pieces of elastic okay so once you've got that joined onto your cowrie shell um, I don't know let's just go with um, a little green bead on one side Oop! says flicking it into the air let's go with a little green bead on that side there okay so you might want to put a few smaller beads as I've done here with the finished anklet either side of the carry shell okay and then you might want to think about uh, mixing it up like I said so just break up the seed beads with the other beads that I've put into the kit uh, just so that it looks really pretty and it gives you different sorts of uh, interest. Now, with the pom-poms and the tassels, hang on, let me just add another couple of these beads and then I'll talk you through the pom-poms and the tassels. You've got the option of either using another jump ring for the pom-poms and the tassels. I think last year when I was doing this, I wasn't even using a beading needle. I was just using the end of the elastic um, and poking it through in a very, very kind of, um, what's the word? I inexperienced is the word, fashion. But now I've got my naive. beading needle. Naive. But and now I've got my beading needle. I love it. So I wouldn't go back, I don't think. So um, with the tassels, they do, and the pom-poms, they do all come with a little ring on them already. So actually, there's no real need to use a jump ring. Okay. So you, you want can... to show us that on the, um, oh, yes. on the tight On the tight, on the one. tight shot. One okay. Tight. I'm ready, my, my love, when you are. There we go. Okay. So you can see there's a little jump ring on the tassel okay so you can just thread it straight on or if you want to you can use a jump ring as well so here's one that i've added on a jump ring all right so the choice is yours if you're using the jump ring it's good to put it between these heart beads um i would just add that it does kind of slip over the top of the smaller beads because it's quite a big jump ring so you probably want to sandwich it so it's good to sandwich it maybe in between the katsuki beads or maybe between the larger beads okay but um, that's for the charms but if you don't want to use a jump ring for the tassels 
and indeed the pom-poms. Let me just add a few more of these uh, Toho beads on. And these Toho beads are great quality, okay? They're lovely glass beads um, and they don't lose their colour, all right? So the ones that come in the tube are the Toho's. Um, and you get a fair number of those. I think it's four grams you get in each of these, okay? Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, let's now add a little pom-pom, shall we? So again, the pom-pom comes with a, a little loop already in it, so you don't need to use another jump ring if you don't want to. You can just thread that straight on. Um, and do that's the, it. Do the, do the pom pom slip over the toe hose? No, no, I don't think they, they do, do actually. No. Not the toe hose, no. Not the toe hose. Not the toe hose. I think they might slip over. These pink ones are not toe hose beads. Not toe hose. No. no. And they're a little bit smaller, okay? They're a smaller bead, but it just mixes it up a little bit and it just adds a little bit of, of different. And it, it's quite nice to have one in the centre of a daisy, I think, actually. Now, are there any questions? So just to, just to carry on with this, with the anklet. So you would do exactly the same thing. You'd double a piece of elastic. You'd thread it through. This is an actual shell, so it's got an actual hole. I hope you can see through the middle of it. You'd have to put that on the tight shot. Go on shot. then, put it on the tight shot. Can you see? There we go. There's my finger underneath it. It's an actual hole through the middle. Actual it's hole. obviously been overprinted with uh, polka dots. All right. Goodness, I wonder how they did that. Yeah, I know. Maybe with a transfer of some sort, perhaps. Somebody with a felt tip pen. <laughs> uh, so you'd do exactly the same thing with the other side. You would you would do a loop, okay, and push it through its loop, and then thread through the other side. Now finishing off, okay. So pretend that I have finished this bracelet or this ring or whatever you want to call it, and I want to tie it together, okay. All I'm doing, um, you can obviously you can remove your stopper bead if you want to, or you can leave it there, it's up to you. All I'm doing is tying like a treble knot, okay? Now, when you're doing the ring, it's good to tie it around something. So you can tie it around your finger, you can tie it around a pen or something like that, because you want to get it to the point where it's just about closed up, all right? Um, and then once you've tied the knot several times, let me try and find the knot. Um, there, okay. Oops. There we go. So once you've tied your little knot, okay, I would put a tiny little blob of gem tack on it and then leave it to dry, okay, and then just trim the ends as short as you can trim them. And then to be honest, they sort of get swallowed up by the bead and you don't really notice them, okay, once you've finished it. So the same with the anklet, the same, where's my bracelet? Let me see if I can find the knot. So you can't even see the knot. Where's the knot? Where are you, knot? Is that the knot? Ah, oh, yes, I think it is here, look. Look, I've hidden it with a tassel. Can you see Clever. that? It's not quite in focus. Oh, sorry. That's because you keep Ooh, moving. There we go, okay. Uh, so you can see I've just done a little knot there. That's then got a gem tack on it. Then there's a little tassel. So once you've actually got that on and you're wearing it, you're sorted. Now, come back to me a sec, sweetie, please, thank you. So, I know a lot of beaders will use probably special uh, wires, maybe, or cords to bead onto, but doing it this way, you don't need to have a closure, okay? Because I wanted to make this fun, and I wanted to make it easy and speedy and quick, and not too fiddly, okay? For, you just want like an end result without too much hassle. So obviously having the elastic allows you to, to put them on, take them off really easily and you don't need any closures, all right? So what I've done is in the instructions you get in the kit, I've done the optimum lengths of how long they should be before you tie them together, type of optimum lengths, okay? So I have recommended, for me anyway, I've got, I don't know if I've got a small neck, I think I might have quite a narrow neck. I think I've gone for 34, um, no, 39 to 40 centimetres long when I was beading it long, finished, okay, before I tied it together for the necklace. But I was working on um, double the length of the elastic. I must stress that because if you end up with 
with hardly any ends at each end when you're trying to tie it together it's going to be a nightmare to tie together all right so so do make sure you've got enough length of elastic so yeah about 39 to 40 centimeters but what i recommend you do is get a necklace that you like the length of take it off and measure it and work towards that okay and then because it's stretchy you can literally just put it over your head and put it on okay i'm just going to tell you the bracelet i ended up with my bracelet being 18 to 19 so this one and the other one which has now gone out of my vision here we go uh 18 to 19 centimeters i did for bracelet ladies wrists i don't know if you're making one for your big hairy husband you may need to make it a little bit bigger although i have wrists of lady yes chris has wrists of lady apparently who who was it that told you that was it a watch salesman somewhere? It was a uh, watchman changing a, um, uh, a band on a watch for me who said I had wrists of lady. Wrists of lady. Okay. And then um, I, I'm presuming you weren't in Wales when that happened. No. And then the anklet, um, I have started with two 40 centimetre pieces of elastic either side of the shell. And then I think I ended up with it 24 centimetres long. But again, if you've got an anklet, measure it. Or indeed, measure your ankle. Pop the tape measure around your ankle. Decide how long you want to end up. Go for that. Okay. Make it exactly that length or maybe maybe a bead over. And, um, and that's when you would tie it together. So I'm sensing a distinct lack of questions this morning. Yes. Is there any I reason think, for that? I think, I think everyone um, is asleep. Karen Smudger Smith has just said hello, Jilly. Hey, Karen. I think they probably. Karen just, Smith, no anchovies. She's probably just. There we go. I'm going to model the necklace. All right. So you feel I just popped it over my head then. There's my necklace. Okay. Let me put my other bracelet on. I'm going to adorn myself now in my jewels. Um, so there are a lot of these ne uh, necklaces, bracelets around, particularly bracelets. I did notice some in Anthro at great expense and I think well you know you can make up your own word or phrase with all the letters um, not only that but you could probably make about 10 for the same money so um, once you've got the kit like I said there's loads in there I'm not going to model the ankle thing the anklets no I think my ankle yeah no. like you don't need to see my hairy ankle oh. let's, let's let's be honest true um, I've now got two watermelon charms on here. I'm going to have to remove one of those. Oh. It's not allowed. Okay. Um, oh, let me model the ring as well. So I'm very pleased with all of this. I think it's fun. Now, in terms of longevity, like I said before, I know I always just wear things and wear things and wear things. I probably would take the ring off, if I'm honest. I wouldn't recommend wearing the cowrie shell in the bar and in lots of water because the black well the black spots will come off eventually if you do keep wearing it in water okay i think the shell you will have be all right been warned. the shell will be fine i think the shell's quite used to water um but i think the rest of it's all pretty waterproof to be honest and regarding the, the the beading elastic it's it's much improved from last year they seem to have changed the way it's made and it it's it's got quite a lot of stretch to it okay i haven't really noticed it um stretching out of shape but obviously you can't keep pulling it ad infinitum it would eventually it would break but i think it's pretty good okay any questions no si necesita subtítulos on español es para hasta que el video esté on youtube y luego puede activarlos hey eh? Hey, claro que sí, claro que sí, amigos. Uh, I know it's impressive, right? All laughing at you across. The I probably Spanish said countries. my hairy ankles are, are full of eels. <laughs> full of eels, and my breakfast ball needs some marmalade. Anyway, I hope I haven't said that. Anyway, um, now look. The thing is, it's Easter weekend next weekend, and I sort of got all kind of. Um, I was thinking about when we'd gone into lockdown last year and I remember, I think it was Easter Monday, I can't remember exactly. Um, I remember thinking, oh, that's when we'd done the spring wreath and we'd filmed it in the garden last year and it was a beautiful day in the garden. 
and I got all sentimental and thought, oh, should we do an Easter Monday? And I thought, actually, no, because I don't know about where you are in the world, but certainly here in the UK, tomorrow you're allowed to meet in groups of six outside. So I'm imagining Easter weekend, literally little groups of six people dotted, dotted everywhere as far as the eye can see all over the countryside outside, regardless of the weather. That's what I'm imagining. So I'm thinking no one's going to be inside watching tutorials. We need to get that out of our system. We need to all go and sit in groups of six outside. And actually on Easter Sunday, next Sunday, it's my daughter's birthday, actually on that day. And I am going to be going and sitting in a group of six with her outside. Can I come? Yes, you can come. So therefore, my next tutorial will be the following Sunday, which is Sunday the 10th of April. No, the 11th of April. Sunday the 11th of April. And I'm going to be showing you how I made my patchwork blanket that sits on my sofa at home from the Stonewash River Washed Shkepia's box. That we oh, sorry, sell. whose? Look, I was going to say sheepies, sheppies, because that's what we say here when we're talking in the shop. That's what British people say. But actually, you pronounce it Shkepia's, all right, oh. if you're Dutch, because it's Dutch. Um, and I, I'm holding it forward because there's probably a terrible reflection. So this is one of our best sellers. It's the most delightful box of mini balls of yarn. Okay. As you can see, they come in all the colours of the rainbow. It's incredibly inspirational, I think. It's really nice to knit with. I knitted um, a, every single one into a square. And then I attached them together using, I can't remember, I think I crocheted them together and I did a crochet scalloped edge. And then I got another box and I made little crochet flowers and I stitched them on. I know, you know, it's not easy being me. Anyway, you don't have to do all that. The project is on my blog at the foot of our homepage of the website if you want to look at it, okay, and see what I'm gonna be showing you. I'm gonna bring the blanket in, obviously, I haven't got it today. But I just wanted to, to give you a forewarning if you wanted to join in with this and get yourself one of these packs. Um, we've got a fair number in stock as I speak, okay. Um, and they are really, really so nice. It's actually so nice. I, know, I do know someone who shall remain nameless who has just hung this on their wall as a piece of art and not actually knitted it because they just like looking at it and I get that because it's so nice to look at anyway so that's going to be Sunday the 10th of April knitting needles at the ready I use a 3.25 millimeter needle okay all the details about exactly how I made it are on my blog all right so I will do a posting of that maybe uh, tomorrow on social media so you can go and have a look <clears throat> but it's already sitting there if you want to see it uh, so that's coming up <clears throat> but in the meantime if there are definitely no questions at all, because everyone's still asleep, I hope you enjoy watching this on catch up. <laughs> and um, I hope you have a lovely... Hey, I made you a new, new sound clip earlier. Oh gosh, yes, I've completely forgotten something. Well done, I'm so glad you're here, Christopher. Um, the thing I've completely forgotten is... This that. is March Madness. There's March Madness. 10% off everything. There's, I was going to say it first, but basically we are doing a special offer at the moment. There's 10% off everything except courses and workshops, but we're not running courses and workshops because we can't, it does irrelevant. So there's 10% off everything on our website, okay, until the end of March, which I think is Wednesday with the code EASTER10. Doesn't matter where you live in the world, you can use that code, EASTER10. If you're watching this, what was that for? Spring. Oh, EASTER10, okay. Uh, if you're watching this after Wednesday, bad luck. But you know, I do do these offers every now and again, so follow me on social. No, but sign up to our newsletter and you'll find out when I do another one. See, I think we've suddenly got. We're, I'm noticing the people who who didn't who've put woken their, up who didn't put their clock forward. Okay, because there's a bunch of people just joining. Oh, are there? Oh, bugger! Excuse my language. Oh, Jillian. Sorry, is language, that rude? Jillian. Um, 
yeah, so Easter 10 gets you 10% off, but I do need to just quickly add in, not, not in conjunction with any other offer, like that man says really fast when you're watching daytime TV, not in conjunction with any other offer. Uh, so you can't use it with any other code and you can't use it with any other offer. And it, unfortunately, you don't collect fluff money, which is our reward scheme, if you use a code, just so you know, just so you know. But, you know, my new yarn that I've just dyed, oh my God, it's so nice. Uh, it's called Boogie Wonderland, okay. Um, I'm going to be launching that tomorrow. We don't have a huge amount of it, but we're going to we're going to do more. Anyway, you know, if you're going to get ten percent off if you buy that tomorrow, code Easter ten, okay. But there's so many goodies. You can get ten percent off the Speedy Beady beading kit that you're now going to have to watch on Catch Up because you didn't wake up in time. Uh, so Easter ten valid till the end of March. Thank you for reminding me. Christopher. What was I saying before that? I don't know. You're I don't know either. I don't something. know. Anyway, look, have a lovely rest of weekend. I'm going to have a lovely rest of birthday boxing day. And um, I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks time. Stay safe, stay well, stay well, and see you soon. Cheery bye. It's chilly in Black Rock.